What's going on, everybody? Thank you for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. So today I'm going to continue the MLB season breakdowns for each national player. Not everyone, but the ones that really meant the most to them and the ones that really stuck in the majors. And today I'm going to be breaking down, drum roll, Patrick Corbin. You love him? Or you don't. Simple as that. He had a rough year, but we're going to really get into it. And should we expect Patrick Corbin to be on this team next season and really just kind of go out there and chucking off that mound? Find out after this. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Again, thank you guys for tuning in and making Locked On Nationals your first listen. I'm your host, Ryan Clary. You can find me over at Twitter, at RyanClary11, and you can follow the page as well, at LO underscore Nationals, and you'll find all your Nationals news and notes, as well as some other stuff there. And like I've said before, DMs are open. I love the feedback, and let me know what you want to see, or maybe what you don't want to see, or maybe what you... Want to see more of? Who knows? DMs are open. Let me know. I love the feedback. So speaking of feedback, let's just get right into it. Patrick Corbin was awful this year. Awful. Awful. And honestly, a lot of people have just kind of shown no mercy with this guy. And they've seemed to forget that he was the pitcher of the year. The left-handed pitcher of the year, which is awarded by, I believe, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame that they give out the best left-handed starting pitcher in baseball. And in 2019, that's what Patrick Corbin was. His first season of a massive contract that Mike Rizzo and the Nationals gave out. He signed a six-year, $140 million deal after the 2018 season, heading into 2019. And year one of that, he lit it up for us. He was a third starter and he was putting up ace numbers. Now, Patrick Corbin, we all know about his devastating slider. His devastating slider, excuse me. And that's something that we're paying a chunk for. You're paying his annual salary to throw that slider and to throw it effectively, to get swings and misses, to strike out batters, to leave batters off base get him to roll over, pop some balls up. That slider itself was really what got him this massive deal and what drove him in free agency to get that. That's what you were paying for. Someone who's going to strike out a lot of hitters. He was always healthy, and he still is. That's something you can't knock him about. He's going to go out there every five days, and you know he may get his tail kicked in, Every five days like he has since 2020. But I got to give the guy credit to where at least he's not getting help. He's not getting hurt out there. He's just struggling and he's going through a rough patch and he hasn't really been able to find the success that he once had in 2019 and as well as 2018 when he was Cy Young candidates those two years. And, you know, I just feel for the guy. I do. And the thing about that is there's just nothing that you can really do or say to where what how can he improve of this how can he grow from the opportunities that he's been given by Davy Martinez to go out there really for the last 3 seasons just get his butt kicked cuz that's let's call it as it is that's what's been going on since 2019 And a lot of people, a lot of Nationals fans on Twitter, they want to get into the discussion of, was he worth that contract? Yes. Enthusiastically, yes. 100%. I sit here today, and if you were to ask me, am I still paying Patrick Corbin that six-year deal? Yes. 100%. Yes. 
Because when we paid him at that time to do what Patrick Corbin does, he was still one of the top pitchers in baseball at that point going into 2019. And before you forget, like a lot of people have seemingly just completely forgotten, do you remember who got the win in Game 7 of the World Series? Take some time. Think about it. I'll tell you here in about two seconds. That was Patrick Corbin. Patrick Corbin came in in Game 7 of the World Series, coming out of the pen, something he obviously didn't really do much, but he got to do in the postseason. He came in out of the pen, Game 7, game on the line, and he closed the door on the Houston Astros. And they allege, or not really allegedly, I actually, I'll say allegedly for 2019. I don't really know if anyone's really gotten down to that, if they were cheating in 2019. But I I like to think that he was. It kind of adds a little more juice to the Nationals postseason success that year. And he shut the door on them. Game seven in the World Series, the biggest stage of our team. He got that done. I have his line right here. Three innings of relief, only two hits, three strikeouts. Threw for 28 strikes in 44 pitches, only 16 balls. This was someone who dominated in that game. Got the win, like I said. In inning six, come in. Three up, three down, I believe. Actually, I I think it was three up, three down that sixth inning. Regardless, the point is, he came in and he shut the door. And that right there voided his contract for me, no matter what he were to do through 2024, when he's next to free agent. That made it worth it. And I think that that should make it worth it for you as well. And I know this is a season breakdown, but... You know, it's kind of tough to break down something that was just flat out bad, if we just call it as it is. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that what Patrick Corbin's been doing since 2020 has been a perfectly all right product. It hasn't been. And he would have been the first to say it. Davey would have as well. Mike Rizzo as well. They know it. Jim Hickey shouldn't be here, but whatever, he would say it too. That that's not an all right performance, and that's not someone that you really want to be paying $140 million spread out through six years to someone who's going to have a six ERA. I mean, just <laughs> look at it. This year, he led all of MLB in hits allowed, earned runs allowed. He gave up amongst the most home runs in the MLB. And you know who gave up the most home runs in the MLB? Josiah Gray, which that breakdown will be coming down the pipe here soon. But Patrick Corbin, we seemingly forget that this was someone in 2019 that we relied on every five days and who came in and was consistent for that team. You could argue that he may have been the missing piece that we needed in the rotation that won us the 2019 World Series. And there's a good argument for that because truly I do believe that I still believe that if Patrick Corbin wasn't on that roster, we wouldn't win that 2019 world series. We wouldn't be in the world series to begin with. Would we be a postseason team? Maybe, but really what, what is that nationals team without that three headed monster of Max Scherzer, then Steven Strasburg, and then Patrick Corbin. What is that team? Because the identity of that team were those three guys. Obviously, Juan Soto, Anthony Rendon, Trey Turner. We got it done offensively as well. But when you look down to it, what people talk about were Max Scherzer and Steven Strasburg in 2019, Patrick Corbin coming on to you back to back to back three days straight. You couldn't catch a break. You just could not. And I I feel like I'm almost alone to where I forget about that. And I get frustrated with Corbin as well. Because when you have a 6-3 ERA, 
when you're getting paid however much money annually, six years, $140 million, his salary will be around 24 mil a year, something like that. I'm not a math guy. That's not good. And I understand that. He knows that too. And that's not even a worth it deal to begin with. But when you put in that game seven in the World Series and what he meant to that 2019 team, it's hard to just look by that and ignore the facts that he was a main part of that roster in 2019. And I don't know about you guys. You can answer it in the comment sections on YouTube or send me a DM, tweet me at Ryan Clary 11. Do you think we win that World Series without Patrick Corbin? I'd love to hear your opinion on it. Just if you disagree or agree, I want to know. It's kind of something that to where I feel like a lot of people have forgotten how important he was to that roster. And I truly think that if he didn't do that in 2019, because also, if you remember, he wasn't all that impressive in the postseason that year. I'll admit that. He wasn't. Going into that game, he pitched in seven games in that postseason and started three of them. 20 innings, 19 hits, 15 earned runs. He had a 6-6-4 ERA in that postseason up until game seven. So he wasn't all that impressive. And batters were go- hitting 240 against him and getting on base in 35% of their at-bats. Nothing impressive. But that game seven, man. Game seven. Season on the line. You're down. We're down and losing at that point. And Patrick Corbin comes in and shuts the door on three innings. And I feel like that's something that you just can't forget about. Because... It's part of history, and it's stitched in to the Washington Nationals fabric as to what we know today. I have a signed game-used Patrick Corbin jersey that I bought after the 2019 season. And I bought that because I wanted someone that who may have Hall of Fame potential at that point. At least that's what I was thinking. I was thinking this three-headed monster was going to be the next 90s Braves roster. But no, it wasn't, unfortunately. So I bought that $1,300, and that hasn't panned out too well. But it's fine. Everything's fine. It happens for a reason. But then again, I still have that memory. I have Patrick Corbett up on the wall, his signed jersey, and I love it, and you should as well. So let's get into his 2022 season. I kind of went a little off there, but I kind of wanted to get set the record straight. But also, I want to set the record straight for my friends over at Roan. Dress shirts are tricky. It's hard to find the one that fits while also being comfy and matches your style. Plus, with all the hustle and bustle you got going on, you need a dress shirt that looks good enough to get the deal done at work, but is comfortable enough to play catch with your kid after dropping him off at school. The dress shirt was due for a radical reinvention, and Roan stepped up the challenge. Roan's commuter shirt is the most comfortable, breathable, and flexible shirt known to man, and here's why. Mobility is everything. Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way from your commute to man, and here's why. Mobility is everything. Roan's comfortable four-way stretch fabric provides breathability and flexibility that leaves you free to enjoy what life throws your way from commute to work to your 18 holes of golf. Looking good is easy. It's time to feel confident with a wrinkle-free shirt without the hassle. With Roan's wrinkle release technology, wrinkles disappear as you stretch and wear the shirt. It's that easy. Odor-free tech with Gold Fusion anti-odor technology. You'll be smelling fresh and clean all day long. And on top of that, Roan is 100% machine washable, so you can ditch the dry cleaner altogether. The commuter commuter shirt can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to Roan.com slash locked on and use promo code Locked on to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to R-H-O-N-E dot com slash locked on and use code locked on. I love my friends over at Roan and you should as well. Just get the shirt and use promo code locked 
on. It's amazing, and it's easy to use. So let's get into Patrick Corbin's 2022 season. I kind of went a little longer than I really wanted in that, but I think, you know, I kind of touched on this earlier that it's tough to break down this season to where there's really not much to break down that's in a real, real positive note. I laid off some of the stats for you here earlier. A 6-3 ERA led the majors in hits given up, led the majors in earned runs. 6-3 ERA in 31 starts, walked 49 batters, only struck out 128 batters, which is the lowest of his career since 2015 in Arizona. If you take out the COVID struck year in 2020, only played 60 games. 128 strikeouts from where in 2019, he struck out a whopping 238 batters. And he's all the way down to 128. That's 110 strikeouts less than he had in 2019. Think about that. Think about how hard it is to do that. He had 33 starts in 2019. And then in 2022, he had 31 starts this season. And he was down that many strikeouts. Here's one good thing I guess we could take away from it. In 2019, he had 70 walks. And this year, he had 49, two less starts. But also in 2019, he pitched 202 innings compared to his 152 innings in 2022. Also, he had 19 losses this season. 19. 19 losses on Patrick Corbin. If you were to take those 19 losses away, obviously whoever we pitched in those games wouldn't have been guaranteed wins for this team. This was a bad baseball team. We saw it from day one. This wasn't going to be a good team, someone that you can rely on to win games moving forward. But 19 losses? That's tough. That is tough. I mean, it's hard to really comprehend the fall off with Patrick Corbin, and it sucks. A lot of people, you know, I don't know why with Corbin, but a lot of people have just kind of, he's been the scapegoat for our struggles since 2019. And a lot of people kind of say, well, he's the reason why we're dishing out all this money to him, which is a fair point. You know, it's he's definitely not helping this team be in contention. He's definitely not doing that. But I would argue that I think there's other guys that have really kind of had the same amount of uh, blame, I guess you could say, as to why this team isn't where we're supposed to be. And it's not just Corbin. For example, I looked at Victor Robles. I look at Victor Robles, and I think he's someone that is really the the case study as to why the Nationals have fallen off. And I say that because I think a lot of people, again, forget about this. Victor Robles was the higher prospect than Juan Soto. Victor Robles was a well-known MLB prospect, and he was someone that we were expecting a five-tool talent out of and to be a superstar. That's what we thought with him. And we As Nationals fans, that's what we banked on. That's what the organization banked on. And a lot of people also forget that in 2019, when we let Bryce Harper walk, a lot of people just say, oh, well, we had Soto coming up too. Soto was already that year, and he bursted onto the scene, and we saw what he could do. But then on the flip side of it, people were saying, well, guess what? We get a top five prospect in baseball with Victor Robles, and he's going to be starting next season in the majors. And he's a top five prospect. And Victor Robles had good numbers in those years. He was someone that we thought we could rely on moving forward. And that just wasn't the case with this team. It wasn't. And we never really knew that it was the case. So it's tough. And it's just tough for me to sit here and to really think about Patrick Corbin and to where that he's come and to pinpoint all the blame on him. He definitely deserves a nice little chunk of blame for this team and where we've come, and especially the pitching staff. But I always, I also look at guys like 
Victor Robles, like I just said. The front office, the learners, not spending, not using their money wisely, you know? Not retaining Daniel Murphy, whether you think letting him go was the right move and trading him in 2018. Whatever the move that makes your head scratch at night and keeps you awake and keeps you flipping your head on the pillow, that's fine. That's your decision, and that's what makes you upset as a fan, and you have that right. But I'm just sitting here today, and I think that Patrick Corbin doesn't necessarily deserve all the hate that he gets. And I only merit that because of Game 7 of the World Series. I can't say that enough, how important that was to this team in the city and in the franchise and to the fans as well. Because how do you remember that 2019 season and how could you forget about what Corbin did in those three innings in relief in Game 7 of the World Series in Houston while they were cheating? while they knew which pitches were coming. Pat, and for especially with Patrick Corbin, who isn't going to blow you by with a 99-mile-per-hour fastball, he's just going to have a, you know, a 98, or not a 98, a 93-mile-per-hour four-seam fastball that is kind of like a hanging duck out there that you can just whack out of the ballpark. And he has a slider that's obviously impressive and was super impressive in 2019, which really was the focal point as to why he was getting all those strikeouts and swings and misses and weak contacts. That's the culprit. That's what made Corbin Patrick Corbin. And I I just hate the fact that people want to forget about that. And I can't say it enough. I've said it so many times today, and this won't be the last time you'll hear that from me. Because I feel like Patrick Corbin's one of those guys where it's an easy one to throw under the bus. It's just easy. It is what it is. And that's fine. If you want to blame Corbin, go for it. I get it. And that this isn't also me saying that Patrick Corbin has been great. I'll acknowledge he's been bad and he needs to be better. And is there a real question to be asked if he should be on this roster in 2023? 100%. And if I was the GM making moves, obviously no one's going to be trading for him. He just lost the MLB most games, 19 games this season, had a 6-3 ERA, and he had a 580 ERA last year. And in 2020, he wasn't much better than that. Had like a 490 ERA, if I recall. Had a lot. I mean, I guess he had strikeouts. But he wasn't impressive. Not at all. And that's fine. I guess. You don't want to know what else is fine. Actually, better than fine. Amazing. It's my friends over at Built Bar. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Ready? Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. All the joys of eating cookie dough without the hassle of making it, plus it's healthy for you. Cookie dough chunk puffs are only 160 calories, and they have a whopping 15 grams of protein in them. Run to Built.com to snag a box for you and the family. It will be the perfect treat. Or you can find a really good hiding place, just like I do, and hoard them for yourself. Like all Built Bars, the new Cookie Dough Chunk Puff is covered in 100% real chocolate. That means they're healthy and tasty. Chocolate-covered cookie dough with a light, fluffy texture. So good. What's great about Built is that all of their bars are made with collagen protein which your body absorbs more efficiently and provides tons of health benefits eat something that tastes good and is good for you you're going to love the new cookie dough chunk puff whether you need a snack for your workout a late night treat or just need to grab a quick bite built is the perfect protein bar and they taste better than a candy bar just the calories fat and sugar and grab yourself a built bar Now, here's the offer for you guys, and pay attention to this. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKEDON15, and get 15% off your first, off your order. Use promo code LOCKEDON15, 
and go to my friends at Built Bar. All right. That was Patrick Corbin's season breakdown. And yes, there's not a lot to say about someone who hasn't impressed. He just hasn't. And that's just really all there is to say. I'm not here and I can't wave a magic wand to sit here and say that he's going to improve going into 2023 because let's look at it. Let's face the facts here. He probably won't. And at this point, do we really need to worry about cutting him or do we just eat the money over the next few years? Because at this point I look at it and I was getting in this yesterday. I get into it so often and it's so exhausting. And I know, but it's a rebuild rebuilds you're going to deal with bad contracts and bad contracts are usually what get you into a rebuilding situation which is what we're stuck in right now with Patrick Corbin leading the way with his partner in crime Steven Strasburg with those two really bad contracts let's just say it as it is it's unfortunate but there's nothing you can do and there's nothing that the learners or Mike Rizzo could do to correct the wrong that they've already made. And so I'm just not going to sit here and dwell on that. The rebuild was going to come no matter what after the 2019 season, because people can say what they want, but the learners were never going to re-sign Anthony Rendon, Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, Juan Soto. All four of those guys were never going to get a contract here. And let's just face it. That's just what it is. And that's, coming to terms with it which is fine it's fine all right quickly here on the back end of it this is the alcs that i've been waiting for yankees astros people are tired of it they're tired of yankees astros i'm not i'm here for it and you should be too this is going to be so exciting i love when the astros go into the bronx it's a zoo there they hate houston And they hate them because they ain't them. That's why, let's just face it, if you're a Yankees fan listening at home, be honest with yourself. You hate them because you ain't them. And they just whip up on you. I don't want to hear your excuse about how they cheated because I know a team that won four games in their place to win a championship. They rhyme with the Washington Nationals. That's what they rhyme with. 2019 Washington Nationals. I don't know. Some teams just beat them while they're cheating. Four games at their place. The first team to ever do that in professional sports history. To win a championship series, four games in the opposing team's house. And not even to mention while Houston was cheating there. So guess what, New York? Just get it done. Just get the job done and don't complain. Why don't you win some games in the Bronx? That'd be cool too, right? You can do that. It's not illegal. You can do that, man. You just beat Aaron Savali. With the Cleveland Guardians. Who's that? He had a 4 or 5 ERA. Now go do it against Justin Verlander. In that roster that they have in Houston. Because they haven't gone anywhere. And they're not going anywhere either. I don't hate the Yankees. And I certainly don't hate the Astros. I love the Astros for cheating in 2019. And beyond. Or prior to that. Because they made that championship even more special. And that's something that sits in my heart. For the rest of eternity. You know what else sits in the rest of eternity? My guy, Paul Francis Sullivan. So thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen today. But now make your second listen to Locked On MLB Podcast. MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories around the league. Follow the number one league-wide podcast, Locked On MLB, on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right, everybody, that'll do it for me today. I will talk to you guys on the flip side tomorrow morning. And we'll see what happens in the postseason. It's postseason baseball. The TVs are on. We're watching late night baseball. You'll love to see it. It's the best time of year. So have a good one, guys, and keep on watching the baseball. And again, let me know what you want to hear. DM me, text, or not text me. Tweet at me, Ryan Clary 11 on Twitter. Again, 
Ryan Clary 11 on Twitter. Let me know what you think of the show and let me know what you want to see. And maybe some interview decisions. Who do you want to see interviewed? I have some options. So let's get it done. All right. We'll talk to you on the flip side. Have a good one. Enjoy the day.